Hey guys, welcome back to another 1.19 Skyblock episode. So we're going to continue our habit of starting episode at the Warning Trader platform until we have everything that the Warning Traders have to offer. So we're still missing melons, proper ghouls, and two types of coral blocks and one tall flower. Okay, so we're already unlucky. We only got a single Warning Trader this time, but let's see what he has to offer. Okay, there is the fire coral block. I think that's actually one we didn't have yet. So I'm gonna buy all of them. And also melon seeds. Okay, that's pretty nice. Let's buy those as well. Bin of emeralds, might as well buy more pots. So although we could technically already start automating getting dirt now that we have stone, pretty much. Okay. Rest is not that interesting. Okay, let's quickly check the advancements again. So we need... Three more things, the sunflower, the proper ghoul, and the brain coral block at this point. Okay, so what are we gonna do next now that we have the lava buckets? I've been thinking about this a lot yesterday. There's so many options of things we could do. We could try to do more of the advancements, try to automate some stuff. And yeah, in a lot of cases, I actually realized we have almost everything available now, but we're not quite there yet. There's so many projects. Uh, when it comes to automation, that just require observers or comparators. For example, I was thinking, hey, it would be nice now to make a sugarcane farm with some flying machines. But then I also realized, hey, for flying machines, we probably need some honey blocks. And in order to farm honey, comparators are super useful. They take the fill level of the hive and so on. So yeah, a lot of projects we could do now, for example, also the sand farm, now that we have dispensers, or could make dispensers, we don't have them yet. Um, yeah, we could automate this. But then I also realized, hey, maybe it would be super useful if you had comparators and observers for this project. So right now I feel like it um, wouldn't be too much fun to do some projects now without observers and comparators. It's, it's all possible, just slightly more complicated. And I feel like uh, we should do a little bit more progress until we the point that we have observers, comparators, and then we can do some side quests again. So my plan is definitely now to get to the nether and make a gold farm so we can do some bartering, get quartz this way. And then once we have observers and comparators available, we can yeah definitely do some side quests again. All right, so the goal for this and probably also the next episode is now to get to the nether, make a gold farm and a bartering setup so we can get some quartz. But I also want to get my hands on some gravel so we can make concrete powder if you combine it with sand. Um, because I also want to start a build project, I want to basically have a central location for myself. I have my storage and a couple of smaller farms somewhere. And yeah, I already have something in mind that I want to decorate my base with and this definitely requires uh, concrete so so far yeah, I mostly just used the blocks that were easiest available didn't really bother too much how everything looks uh, I want to also yeah, start a nice looking base I have an idea of it I'm not the best builder but I want to put some effort into this and I feel like yeah the thing was holding me back was just the the choice of blocks uh definitely need to get my hands on some some concrete so we can also start that all right now we need to first get more lava yeah actually we have to wait for more dripstone to appear that's also a really slow uh yeah process here getting more dripstone at this point at least we have what is it 18 dripstone blocks i think we started with six but it just takes a very long time. Uh, should I already maybe take some of those, get a little bit more lava, or you could also maybe try to make a stone generator first. That's something I should definitely make. Finally, you get some cobble. Um, but the steps towards the gold farm also include getting some magma blocks. It's just super useful to have magma blocks because only the um, zombified picklings can spawn on the those. So in order to get magma blocks, I want to make a frog glide farm. So once we get to the nether, go to a basalt delta biome and farm some magma cubes there uh, with some frogs. So basically a two-in-one farm. We already have a couple of frogs. Definitely want to get frog glides in all colors. And a side product you get here from the frog glide farm is always a lot of uh, magma cream. So it happens basically every time you kill a medium or large magma cube, they drop um, magma cream. And then the tiny ones don't drop anything, but we need those tiny ones to feed the, the frogs. So yeah, 
first let's make a portal once we have a bit more dripstone with the lava and then I'm gonna work on the frog light and um, yeah make my cream farm. Okay, good that we have actually two lava buckets, so I can use one lava bucket to make more lava. So get this dripstone set up here, and then I can use the other lava bucket to make a little cobble farm. So while we wait for lava to generate and dripstone to grow, yeah, let's make a little cobble farm here that we can AFK use. Thinking for chests here, then hopper. And some hoppers above. Then just some leaves here on the side. Brought four water buckets. Then just lava on the other side. Since we only have one sewer, so we actually have to spread it a bit. Um, how do we do this? Maybe just one block higher up would be fine, yeah. Good way to go. Um, so there will be cobble. Let's go one block higher. Place some blocks there, spread the lava. And then we can break the prism ring below. Okay. And now we should have a cobble set up here. Okay, let's try it out. Yep, this works pretty well. So it takes like eight ticks to break a cobble and the lava flows every 30 ticks. But it should be almost perfectly timed. I wasn't sure if I had to use this double hopper setup because I was worried about um, the hopper cooldown. So if the hopper picks up an item, then transfers it later after eight ticks, it has another cooldown then might not be able to actually pick up the, the cobble item. So I was afraid of this happening, that's why I used the double hopper setup. Not entirely sure if this is actually necessary, should have maybe tested this in creative. Oh, but this works pretty well. And check it out. Already got yeah, almost two stacks of cobble. Okay, then I would say I can AFK here for, let's see, 6000 uses left. I shouldn't do it too long. On the other hand, it's not a, a big loss if you break a pickaxe now, but I can definitely AFK for like half an hour, and then we should definitely have at least one more lava source in there. It's also random, so it takes like 10 minutes or so on average. Also would need to look this up. Okay, then let's go AFK here. So it's 35 minutes later, the cauldron hasn't filled. I actually looked this up. It takes on average 19 minutes to fill up a cauldron. So we've been a little bit unlucky. And we also definitely do need a lava source above each dripstone. So there are lava particles point the dripstone here, with just a flowing lava above, but it never would fill the cauldron this way. So we yeah, definitely need to wait for this cauldron to be filled. Then we can place the next source and so on. Yeah, it will actually take a while until we are at a point where we can make some obsidian. Right, but at least we got a lot of cobble. Probably got, yeah, maybe 75 stacks of cobble already. I'd say I'm just gonna repair my pickaxe and AFK a little bit more. Yeah, uh, we can't really rush this. <laughs> it's unfortunate. At least we got a little bit more pointed drips in here as well. Oh, there we go. I just came back from repairing my pickaxe by selling some iron. And finally we got the lava source. Alright, then let's climb up here. Place the second bucket. And now we're already twice as fast. So it's basically just yeah, exponential growth now. At some point, it's gonna be easy to get the uh, 40, no, 10 obsidian we need for the portal. It's a couple hours later now. We have over eight double chests of cobble now. And also the required lava. Actually, the limiting factor to getting more lava right now is not having enough dripstone. This is really slow, it takes on average 100 minutes for dripstone to grow and we have 25. So I only get like 15 dripstone per hour at this point, so really slow. I can just add them continuously. At the top we already have a um, yeah, full lava pool. Okay, then I would just make another portal now, so we need 10 lava for the portal. Questions, where should we do it? Um, I have the water source over there, it would be a good idea. I can still move it later. Alright, then... Yeah, let's do it here. Just gonna waterlock this. 
make it a bit easier to place the portal. We just need to place the buckets next to it without any water spilling, any accidents. So does this work? Nope. This does. Okay. I think at the top I can't place the lava out an additional waterlocked block though. Yep. Okay, then I need another waterlocked block here on the side, I guess. Should work fine. Okay, now we can place the lava. Yeah, just remove the water again and the leaves. And flint and steel, do I have one? Definitely don't have flint and steel. Oh! That's something I haven't really thought about. How do we do we light this now? Uh, I've totally not thought about this. I thought I have some flint and steel, but how would I? I can't get gravel yet. Oh, this is going to be an extra challenge. I think I know what to do. We can just use fire spread from lava. So we'll just place the lava source here. And then we can use hay bales. That's something I actually didn't know until a couple months ago. That different types of blocks have a different probability to catch on fire. So hay bales and I think also stuff like scaffolding has a 12 times higher chance catch on fire compared to wood, for example. It's quite interesting. Okay, I'm pretty sure it doesn't need to be one higher. Let's just place one more. Lava should be able to spread over there. Could maybe also just place the lava here at the top and let it flow down. Might have higher chances this way. Maybe we'll have a try. Not sure how long this will take, but eventually it should catch on fire. So five minutes later and still no fire spread there. I know this can be really slow. I remember the first perimeter we made on Cycroft, the Quad Witcher perimeter back in the day, we used planks as a surrounding block, we just built walls around it. And we didn't really check on all the lava sources around it. And sometimes after a week or two, all of a sudden some of the planks burned down. And it was fine for, for literally a week or so and, and then a fire would start again. So it took a very long time sometimes until this ignited. Maybe we should actually go to creative and tick real quick to see how long this will take. Or if it's actually set up the right way. It does happen at all. Okay, waited one hour in creative and nothing happened. There are air blocks here in between. I'm not sure. I also looked up how the fire spread works again on the wiki. I was pretty sure the setup should work like this. Hmm, what else can I do? Could maybe try to place some lava down there. That yield better results. Should also work technically. Let's see. Let's do tick up again. Why wouldn't this catch on fire? Is it also random tick based? I'm just curious. Maybe you can actually accelerate it. Um, game rule random tick speed. Is it higher? Just for the sanity check, fire spread, fire tick is on, yeah? Yeah, just really slow, I guess. Like, really, really slow. So I even expanded this and still no fire. At this point, I'm almost sure there's something wrong with this. Maybe there's a bug that hay bales can't catch on fire. Let's maybe try to do something different. Let's try planks. Because I've definitely seen wood burn, as I said. <laughs> okay, let's see. Maybe that does it. And immediately. Okay. So the wiki says hay bale can be set on fire by lava. But that's a lie. <laughs> okay. We just need to use planks for some reason. Weird. I think we found a bug. Okay, let's try it with the planks. Oh, we got a fire. Okay, it didn't take long at all now. All right, and now we can go to the nether. I brought a little bit of cobblestone so we can bridge a bit. I guess cobblestone is gonna be our building block of choice for a while. 
technically can also make better looking ones with vanilla recipes, stone, smooth stone, stone bricks and so on. But there's actually also a way to get deep slate now. The advancements tell you how to do it. It's actually good. Somebody was asking in the comments of the last video to show the advancement progress again. So the last thing I did was following this quest line here, here of the village, getting lava. And the last thing I did was build a cobblestone generator, space age. Yeah, now we can also get deep slate, convert stone to deep slate with a thick potion. So we can get those uh, thick potions once we have a brewing stand, so we need to kill a blaze and just throw a splash potion on it. I think that's gonna be actually fun to automate a bit. <laughs> really looking forward to this. Yeah, then one more. Craft an ore in a smithing table. I think you just combine stone and I think eight diamonds, for example, to get ores. Okay, there's a couple other ones. Um, so we haven't done some of the ones in the beginning, still missing, get, uh, getting uh, a cobweb from a spider jockey, then this echolocation we talked about, then an enderman needs to pick up tall grass and large fern, convert a spider uh, to a cave spider with poisonous potatoes missing, and craft sweet berries with a glow ink sack to get glow berries. That's something we could do right away. Then we're still missing this dolphin for <laughs> Heart of the Sea, Elder Guardian, yeah. Conversion with lightning, glow vines, and there's a couple others. So what we can do once we get to the nether is get some netherrack because it generates around the portals. Okay, we should probably do this next. And there's a couple other ones. Yeah, you can also take a look at later. Yeah, so maybe in one of the upcoming episodes, we're gonna clear all the ones here in the beginning. Okay, but now let's finally go to the nether. Let's get some netherrack. Then we could also finally yeah, convert some of the starter blocks we had. Oh, I'm actually in 1.19.2. So the mod got updated. If you're in the right biome now, instead of generating Nazarak around, it will generate those uh, Nylium blocks. Okay. But I can also turn this into Nazarak and generate the other type. So technically it wasn't even necessary to keep the blocks from the beginning because the, the mod got changed. Okay, so yeah, that's the nether here. They're actually high up at 70. Yeah, it's also a void. <laughs> uh, not much to do. So I guess the next thing, just gonna mine some of the, the Nylium now to have it. I think it should also regenerate if we go to the nether again. I'm not sure how it works. If it does regenerate, I mean, not actually, only if we would break the portal, yeah, it would make sense. Yeah, so the next thing I want to do is then, I guess, find a suitable location for the froglight farm so we need a what's it called again basalt delta i guess i'm just gonna look this up the nylum is also gonna be useful right away because i want to get some weeping vines with those i can easily get to y0 without using gt <laughs> client side features so i could always use tweaker rule just to bridge down but we can also do it a bit more legit so just need to yeah, grow a tree um do any cheers no don't even Okay, then we can place those vines in the nether, bone meal them, and climb down, and then place a block at the bottom. Okay, let's see. Um, we can probably just attach it here. Bone meal, and all the way down. Oh, it's not that easy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's actually kind of scary. <laughs> Why is it so hard? Come on. Okay, got one block. Okay, then... Yeah, we can do it like this. <laughs> I guess it's a bit less scary. Okay, so I made it. I bridged out about 400 blocks and I already made the portal again with the lava spread technique. Let's see what it brings us in the overworld. Yeah. Oh, there's also another rack around. Yeah, that's a surprise. And how high are we? Y70 again. Yeah, it seems like it puts us to Y70 by default. Always a little bit higher, but in this case it doesn't even matter. So why did I go to the overworld? This is actually a phantom territory. Oh, it does actually matter. <laughs> it does matter. <laughs> because above Y62 or so, uh, we get phantom spawning. Didn't he go through the portal? No. 
Ah, <laughs> do I still have a weeping vine? Yeah, we can also use that. But what I was about to say it doesn't really matter because the reason I, I'm gonna go there in the overworld is that's actually a nice spot. So the basalt delta biome isn't too far from here. And in the overworld we got a nice spot where we have a savanna biome next to a plains biome and also a snowy slopes biome nearby. That means we can all get all three types of frogs uh, right there. Okay, then I'd say I don't have a bed on me or something like that. Um, I should maybe yeah, sleep again and then go down a little bit. Bring some tadpoles already and build like three pools and three different biomes where we can grow the frogs. Okay, that's a really good amount of tadpoles we have here already. Unfortunately, I don't even know how many frogs we're gonna need. So I think I'm just gonna pick up those. We should maybe also go to creative right now and try to design the farm real quick. Okay, looks like this is not gonna be too complicated. Already got a working farm here, but I wanna optimize this a little bit. So unlike in a normal world, unless you have a void perimeter, um, yeah, we get a really high spawning rate. So there's no problem at all to get enough um, magma cube spawning, but we definitely need to optimize a little bit the pathfinding. So like the big magma cube here seems to be a little bit disoriented. Doesn't make its way into the pit here quick enough. I was thinking maybe I need to reposition the golem, maybe move him one block lower. And also maybe make the gap here on the side a bit wider, so the larger ones um, jump in there quicker. Apart from that, yeah, basic setups, you're gonna have the frogs at the bottom under the powder snow, eating all the tiny cubes that are left over, so as you can see, this chest, we already have some frog lights, and also the magma cream, which we're mostly after. Um, we're gonna need a lot of powder snow, because the powder snow not only breaks the magma cubes, it also prevents the frogs from just jumping out. So that's why I have a full layer of powder snow here. Um, we definitely have to place on some cauldrons in the snow biome before we can build this. Anyway, I'm gonna try to optimize this a little bit. Yeah, just to make it a bit quicker. Alright, I made everything a little bit larger. It's kind of interesting, the mobs are spawning in waves, so we got a whole lot of magma cubes spawning. Then the mob cube is filled and actually overfills, because they split up into smaller cubes. And then we have to wait until the frogs eat off all of the tiny magma cubes and then a new batch can spawn again. So we should definitely have enough spawning spaces, that shouldn't be the issue. Um, yeah, also here the slabs are placed in order to prevent gas spawning. And to prevent actually the, the magma cubes from you know, jumping on top of the golem here. Basically we could maybe move this up um, half a block higher. Not sure if that would actually help much. And then we would also need to make it spawn proof again. Alright, um, I guess one thing that could definitely improve the efficiency of the farm is just using more frogs. At the moment I got 30 frogs down there. I can maybe do a test counter. See how much items we're getting. So right now it's about 16,000 frog light and 1,600 magma cream. I'd say, yeah, half an hour test should be enough. Let's try it maybe with 50 frogs if we can see a difference. So 50 frogs definitely improved the result. We're getting maybe roughly 20% more. So getting 18,500 frog light now and almost 2,000 magma cream power. Maybe 70 frogs. Would be even better, but I think going with like 45 or 50 should be fine. And I was also thinking maybe a different setup would be even better. Maybe we could even skip the iron golem and have the magma cubes falling down even faster. We could maybe have like single strips of blocks and then the magma cube would just jumping randomly to the right or left and then fall down. And then we need a larger frog pit. This could maybe improve it a little bit further. But, to be honest, the best would be just some portal spam again. Um, magma cubes directly spawning inside of the portal. But since, yeah, it's kind of hard still to get obsidian. I think we're just gonna go with the one dimensional farm for now. But we could definitely also make a portal farm. But yeah, I'm fine with that. I guess the only thing that's missing now is yeah, just prevent the uh, magma cubes from spawning out on the side. Could maybe just add some fence around and then this would be ready to be built if we had the resources. So I guess the next thing we actually need to do in survival is to get the powder snow. So we will need 81 buckets of powder snow. 
I crafted a couple hundred cauldrons. I'm gonna place them down here in the snowy biome where we had the fox farm. So just here on the side. All right, there we go. Unfortunately, the next thing we need to do is waiting and a couple hours of that until some of those cauldrons are filled with snow. I already tried to use my Disney princess powers, didn't work this time, so <laughs> can't really speed this up. Um, we could maybe do some smaller things because I actually adjusted the magma cream farm. It's not cobble only at this point. Used a couple other blocks to make it a little bit nicer. Um, we would need to smelt a bit of cobble, so we would need to get furnaces. But yeah, I mean, it also takes like five minutes, I guess. I'm gonna end the episode here and I'm gonna AFK overnight and then hopefully we have enough powder snow. All right, that's it for today. Next episode definitely is gonna be a froglet farm, and then gold farm and bartering setup. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.